The Sharingan is probably one of the coolest, sickest abilities in all of anime. And I mean that in a sense of like, imagine if you brought the Sharingan to real life. That would be absolutely insane. Of course, I'm sure there's people in the comment section that could tell me, hey, this ability is better to bring into real life, this ability is better, so on and so forth. But I absolutely love the Sharingan. So what happens when you put the Sharingan in an anime like Demon Slayer? Arguably, Demon Slayer is on the weaker side of the more popular animes. So giving Tanjiro or having him be born with the Sharingan, well, let's just say makes him very, very strong. Turns a normal human being into someone that is definitely powerful even before he learns how to fight and use a sword. Of course, in terms of Demon Slayer, in terms of the events, not much would change in terms of a negative sense. Most of it would be all positive. I mean, besides the fact that the Kamado family would still be killed and murdered, and Nezuko would still turn into a demon. But there's an argument to be made that maybe Tanjiro can utilize the Sharingan to calm Nezuko down himself, make her seem more human-like, aka put her under a somewhat conscious willing genjutsu that would allow her to actually be i wouldn't say controlled but at least to the point of kind of like what uro kodaki did with with his more or less hypnosis now with the whole fight with giyu on the other hand tandro would fend giyu off pretty well i mean he was able to almost hit him in the head with an axe, but with the abilities of the Sharingan being able to read his movements and so on and so forth, Giyu Tomioka would for sure have one hell of a battle against Tanjiro. But even with that said, everything would kind of go very similar in terms of going to Uro Kodaki and what, what occurs throughout this time. Tanjiro would train with, with the spirits of Sabito and Makomo, and eventually leading him to the final selection. Now, the final selection would be far, far, far easier. I mean, if you're a swordsman, you're learning to use a sword, learning a breathing style, and you're telling me the Sharingan wouldn't allow Tanjiro to more or less learn water breathing extremely fast? You're definitely kidding yourself. Tanjiro would learn water breathing very easily and very quickly, and his abilities, his, his willingness to use a sword, and honestly, his just ability to fight would be so far beyond where he would be at in original canon that the hand demon would be an absolute joke. Tanjiro with the Sharingan would slice him up like butter and kill him very, very quickly. And there's an argument to be made that Tanjiro could go around that entire forest slaying every last demon in there, something that Sabito himself were, was unable to do. Now, with all that said, Tanjiro would eventually arrive back with Urokodaki and Nezuko, and everything would go kind of exactly the same. I mean, the Swamp Demon would be basically a joke. I mean, he was kind of a joke in the first place, wasn't the the strongest demon Tanjiro has ever faced, a very basic one, and with the help of Nezuko, who is a lot more tame and structured, they would easily be able to defeat the Swamp Demon. Now, the real change would be with Muzan. Yes, Tanjiro would 100% come across Muzan, but how would this really affect anything, or how would the Sharingan affect anything? Well, he could definitely scare Muzan quite a bit. Muzan was already scared because of the scar that's on Tanjiro's head, obviously remembering back to Yorichi. But Tanjiro would also be able to use Genjutsus to kind of terrify Muzan. And this would uh, force Muzan to flee no matter what. And this would uh, make a fight with any other demons that Tanjiro has to face in terms of Muzan sending him after them. Being that of the two that hunt him down during this, during this part of the arc. But Muzan would send them, and it would be an easy breezy fight for Tanjiro, but Muzan would have that imprinted in his mind. The red eyes of that boy, but the red eyes were different, far different. It's as if they were, they were power be, beyond those eyes. They were not just eyes that moved quickly, it was as if the eyes were showing him things, telling him things, as if the eyes were doing far greater than you could possibly imagine, and that would terrify Muzan. Muzan would be petrified by that specifically. Now, 
everything else in terms of meeting up with Zeni Zenitsu wouldn't really change. I mean, of course, he would meet the boy. They would head over to the mansion, and the fights there would be drastically more, at least easier, in the sense of Tanjiro is far more skilled. He's basically perfected water breathing. His Sharingan allows him to deduce everything a demon will do before it does it. And also, he learns from every single demon he fights. His eyes see everything. So at the end of the day, Tanjiro can read, react, and manipulate everything on a battlefield. And that's even excluding Genjutsu. I mean, Genjutsu would obviously set him up drastically for open hits on every single demon he faces. He'll force the demon to see a certain thing, and he would go for the kill shot instantly. This would make a absolute assassin out of Tanjiro. A Tanjiro that would be, not hesitate in killing every last demon. So he's e easily able to finish up this man mansion, defeat all the demons, save the kid, and that's the easy part of all of this, right? Well, the main thing that you probably are wondering is, well, Mount Natagumo. Now, this would kind of not change at all until you get to Rui. The fight with Rui, Tanjiro would be far more equipped and just drastically stronger. I mean, we have a Tanjiro with a Sharingan, ta a Tanjiro that is an expert swordsman in terms of water breathing. I mean, at the end of the day, his water breathing might be on the level of Giyu Tomioka, a Hashira. And Giyu was able to basically one-shot Rui. Yes, I know the circumstances of the reason why he was able to one-shot him. But at the end of the day, Rui was outclassed by a mile. And that wouldn't be changed at all. Rui would be outclassed just like normal. But not by... T uh, but like last time, it wasn't by Tanjiro. But this time, it is by Tanjiro. Tanjiro would easily defeat Rui. And all the demons there would fall pretty quickly to either Tanjiro or... An Incoming Hashiras being that of Giyu or also Shinobu. The demons of this so-called forest would be easily, easily defeated. And it seems like Tanjiro and Nezuko are then brought back to their the headquarters of the Demon Slayers. Now, just like always and just like every single time that probably you would ever hear this story, Nezuko would be questioned in terms of her demonhood. But this time around, Nezuko wouldn't even actually look at the blood. She wouldn't even care about it at all. The Genjutsu that she's basically put under, and it was in a way subconsciously voluntarily allowing herself to be put under, well, Nezuko wouldn't even hesitate at the fact that there's blood in front of her. It's as if she's not really a demon, but she does have the strength of a demon. It's as if Nezuko subconsciously was willing to actually put aside those demon urges, and due to the Sharingan that, well, Tanjiro had, in which she would be allowed to become a Demon Slayer, just like Tanjiro, and more or less, whatever else would happen from here on out in terms of the training or the rehabilitation arc would go practically the same. There would be some instances with maybe Kanao and Aoi and some other people in the Demon Slayer mansion asking about the eyes that Tanjiro has and the eyes that he's been showing in which he explains that he doesn't necessarily even know where they come from. There's no nothing on books, there's nothing on anything. So he can't really give them a straight answer, but he tells them that he can use his eyes to more or less manipulate someone into doing something, show people something that isn't actually there, read and actually react to certain movements and would and can actually learn very quickly in terms of movements that they use. He explains that if if he just watches a Hashira use their breathing styles, he could mimic them very, very easily, in which everyone thinks this is a fantastic thing to know. So how about every single person there shows Tanjiro or show Tanjiro exactly what they're capable of, in which that's exactly what they do. Tanjiro sees the breathing style from the stone Hashira to the flame Hashira to Shinobu to Giyu, all of them. And in seeing all of this, he's actually able to learn every single breathing style. Yes, the breathing styles are drastically different and some of the movements are definitely hard for Tanjiro. But in terms of knowing how each one works and how to utilize each one, Tanjiro can do that very, very simply, all because of his eyes. 
and it's absolutely insane making him a demon slayer that is the first to ever know all of these branches of sun breathing because at the end of the day everything does stem through sun breathing but tondra will be one of the first to actually know every single little branch from love breathing to water to whatever you can think of he knows it and that's something that a demon slayer has really never done ever and after this rehabilitation and also training because that's exactly what it would be Tanjiro would embark with Rengoku, Anosuke, and Zenitsu to the Mugen Train. And the Mugen Train would be something that would be pretty basic. In terms of Enmu, Tanjiro would easily be able to defeat Enmu just like he did before. But now we come to Akaza. Akaza is a foe that is terrifying. Would Tanjiro be able to take down someone like Akaza? And, well, it's hard to say. Yes, the Sharingan is very, very strong, but Tanjiro's physical capabilities might not be able to keep up with someone like Akaza, so he may fall behind and actually end up losing. But one thing I will say is I don't think a combo of Rengoku and, well, Tanjiro wouldn't, wouldn't be able to last until daytime. I truly believe that the combo of them could survive, and I think Rengoku may get injured or wounded but i don't think he would die i think this version of tanjiro would give enough support enough strength and it has enough ability to actually stop the death of rengoku especially because he's able to read akaza's movements and if tanjiro basically takes the lead foot well he already knows what what akaza is going to do before he even does it now because he was able to see all of the movements akaza has been doing let's just say a second fight with Akaza would be drastically different than the fight that just happened right now, in which Akaza feels that that could be the truth in all of this matter. Now, with that said, it's great that Rengoku lives. He lives, Anosuke lives, Zeni too, obviously, right? And Tanjiro, of course. Now, the next part would be the normal missions they'd be going through but the main thing that we need to be talking about is the entertainment district now how would they do over there well the arrival of finding Daki would go exactly the same but the fight would definitely not Tanjiro could easily keep up with Daki maybe even defeat her but of course we know Daki isn't the strongest of the two and once Gutero is involved it is a little bit different but the fact is they have Tengen there as well and a combo of Tengen and also Tanjiro with Zenitsu and Inosuke taking on Daki well Gutero and Daki would fall far quicker than before now in terms of the poison well I would like to say that maybe Uzui or Tengen survives and he can still be a Hashira but there's a good chance that that's not necessarily the case right and yes maybe Nezuko will be able to heal him from the poison earlier on but there's no guarantee on that either and we don't know how far along Nezuko truly would be because of how strong Tanjiro is in this scenario so in a weird way it's kind of detrimental in terms of well um, in terms of the survival of Tengen compared to Rengoku. Now, I don't think Tengen would die because I think Nezuko would evolve during this time, but it wouldn't be at the very beginning. It she wouldn't be able to cure him or heal him immediately. It would probably be same as usual toward the end of their fight against Daki and Gutro. But luckily enough, Nezuko can still heal them, so at least Tengen can go on with his life as normal. And basically have whatever he wants throughout the throughout that time with his three wives now the next part would be the swords smith village arc now just like what i've been saying the most of this time um not much would change in terms of the fights i mean tondra would probably have a way easier time in the fights and he would have a great great time learning from the yorichi uh kind of robot type of thing or the Yorichi type zero because at the end of the day Tanjiro with the Sharingan can learn all the movements of the Yorichi and on top of that can learn how to counter every single bit of it and he would get amazing training from it 
But in terms of the other demons that show up, Tanjiro would be a lot better in this situation. Even when dealing with Hantengu and more or less it being pretty difficult to cut off his head and the ever evolving into different demons after demon after demon. I mean, Tanjiro's precision with the Sharingan would be so immense that he would easily be able to cut the head off of the demon, making this a very simple event. And let's just say, Muzan has lost a lot here, and he'll continue to lose a ton, especially when a Nezuko that may not be as evolved or as further along as you may think would still be able to conquer the sun. But here's my reason why she would still be able to conquer the sun. It's all because of the Sharingan. The Sharingan more or less would have her acting like a human, have her kind of thinking she is a human in a way, and in my opinion, it was all within her anyways in terms of being more or less resistant or completely conquering the sun. So once she does, and she's there, and she conquers it, well, it's over. The Muzan hunt would begin, of course, but that's the worst idea Muzan could even come to, because we have... A Hashira in Rengoku, so we have one extra Hashira, and on top of that, we have a far stronger Tanjiro that, on top of his strength, his ability to actually use every single breathing style he could possibly know, he would, on top of that, know sun breathing and would know how to utilize it just based on all of these kind of breathing styles he understands and can actually utilize. And on top of that, well. We're talking about a Tanjiro that knows the weaknesses and the strengths of many demons. So he may see a demon's movement. He may see something go a certain way. And frankly enough, it would be easy for him to kill, slay every single demon. Every demon that they come across. Yes, don't get me wrong. This will be an actual battle. This won't be like the rest of them where it's all one-on-one -on -one and it's very easy for Tanjiro. But the rematch with Akaza in the Infinity Castle would be no joke. Tanjiro would understand the way Akaza moves and he would easily be able to defeat Akaza with Giyu. And with Rengoku also there, you have an extra pair of hands that would be able to kind of transcend what they needed to do. And no doubt in my mind, Tanjiro would have unlocked his Demon Slayer mark far earlier so even earlier in the story maybe and it would kind of go exactly the same in terms of everyone or at least most people getting their demon slayer marks so the demons that died normally would still die and you may even have a more fresh and more well kind of rejuvenated group of hashira to take on muzan and like i said the sharingan is so broken it is so op now it's so OP that, I mean, I kind of even left out part of the Sharingan. And part of the Sharingan would be the Susanoo. And I am I know there's a lot of things that need to occur for the Susanoo, but I mean, his whole family did die. And technically his sister did as well, or at least at one point he thought his sister was dead. So it would be kind of crazy to not think that he had the Mangekyo Sharingan. And if he did... Well, the Susano, even if it wasn't perfected, would be pretty beneficial in the fight against the demons. Now, let me know what you guys think. If Tanjiro was born with the Sharingan, what would have happened? Do you think it would go exactly how I think? Pretty easy for the, the Demon Slayers and the Hashira and Tanjiro himself? I mean, the Sharingan does make training that much easier, and, well, at the end of the day, if you can learn breathing styles and swordsman techniques, as fast as you can i mean it definitely gives you a leg up on the demons but like i said let me know in the comment section below what you think keep it civil down there of course and uh as always leave a like leave a sub and leave a comment down below all that good stuff and i hope all y'all have an amazing day later